So when you right click on the form that you need in your online profile, this is what will download. You can open it up in your Adobe Reader and then if you want to see the form you just need to double click on this little pin here and it states what it is that it's going to open there so we can double click and there we go and this is the schedule one application for temporary residents so this is an additional and an optional form that you can supply with your application it is always better to supply more information so that they have everything in front of them and they don't have to contact you and take time, you know, delay the whole process by getting more information from you. It's better to supply as much information as you can in the beginning so that they have everything that they need to process your, your application as quickly as possible. Otherwise, it's back and forth between you and the IRCC and every time it is a time delay. So we can quickly go through this form so you have a basic idea of what it is that they're looking for and what you need to provide them with. So you will see here the principal applicant, his or her spouse or common law partner, if applicable, and all dependent children aged 18 years or older listed in the application for temporary residence must complete their own copy of this form. So if your kids are older than 18, then they need to have their own form. And remember, this is the Schedule 1. You always need to make sure, because it's the same number as you can see here, it's IMM5257B underscore 1. So that means that it's Schedule 1. So it's different to the Form 5257. So this is what you need to fill in. I'm not going to fill it in, I'm just going to work through it with you so you ha have an idea of what it is they're looking for and you can have everything ready. And also remember to validate your form when you've completed everything because as soon as you press validate, it will show you where there is information that's incorrect or missing. And then you can make sure that it states here under validated um, that it says yes and then you know your form is ready to submit and also if you've started or you've done one form and the information is incorrect you can just clear the form by pressing clear form here and it will clear the form for you so you don't have to go and click every single thing you can just clear the whole form at once so indicate whether you are the principal applicant or the spouse, common law partner, or dependent child aged 18 or older of the principal applicant. So in this case, you are the principal applicant, so you're going to click there. Please ensure that you complete this form with the information as shown in your passport or your travel document, because if it's not the same, it will be an issue and they will need to contact you to get further information. So always ensure that you insert the information into the form as it is on your official passport or travel document. So here they want your full name, your family name, that would be your surname or your last name that you can put in here, your given names, that is what you are called. If you have more than one, complete all of them here as per your passport or your travel document. They need your date of birth with the year first and then the month and the day. And then your UCI number, please ensure that you insert that wherever you can because it just makes it easier to link it all together to your profile. So if you have the UCI number, then please insert it into number three. Then they want to know your military service. So did you serve in any military, militia or civil defense unit or serve in a security organization or police force, including non-obligatory national service, reserve or volunteer units? So if you have done any of these, then you click yes and you complete the date, which is the year and the month from 
and then to the year and the month, the location where you were stationed, wherever that might be, the province where that was, and then the country or territory is a drop down where you click and you just choose whichever territory or country it was. Now, if you've had different locations or different years that you've been serving, then you'll just complete more. If you don't need more lines, you can just delete them here by clicking on the minus sign and it will just take it away. So if you only have one, then you complete the one line and you can delete the others. If you need more lines, just click on the plus sign here and you can add more lines. And then if you don't have any military service, then you can just say no and it will just blank the rest out. It will take it away and you don't have to fill in anything else. The next question is just have you ever witnessed or participated in the ill treatment of prisoners or civilians, etc. And here you can say no or yes. So if you say no, it will take all the lines away. If you say yes, then you can just insert the from year month to year month, the location, the province and country or territory by using the drop down. If you have more than one line you can just complete the next line or you can erase a line by just clicking on the minus or adding one by clicking on the add button. If it's no it's going to take all of that away and you won't see anything else. The next question is membership or association with organizations. If you have any of those, then please select yes or no here. Please ensure that you do provide the correct information because if they do start looking into your profile, it's easy these days to see where you have been and what you have done. So don't lie on an application, rather tell the truth. You can always explain it in your letter, why, how, and all of that. So always tell the truth here. And um, if they need more information, put it in your explanation letter or once they need information, they will request it. So just say yes or no here. Again, it's from the year and the month to the year and the month, the name of organization and the activities and or positions held within the organization, the province where it was, and then the country or territory by using the drop down. You can take away lines by clicking on the minus or add more lines by clicking right here. If you say Yes, you can complete the lines. If you say no, it will delete the lines and you will you don't need to fill in anything. Then the government positions. Have you ever held any government positions? If it's yes or no, again, if you click no, it will just take it away. And if you click yes, you need to complete all of that with all the information they need right here. You can add more lines by clicking here or take lines away by clicking there. So we're going to say no. And then the previous travel, this you need to include all of your travel that you've done. From the age of 18, depending on which is like the closest, or the past five years. So whichever is more recent. Have you traveled to any country or territory other than the country of your citizenship or your current country of residence. So what this means is that you don't have to include the lines where you were, say for instance like us, we were from South Africa. So all the time that we spend in South Africa or where we flew back to South Africa um, and were there for a period from to, you don't have to include that. You only include where you are outside of your country of residence or citizenship. So also, if you're currently on a work permit in Canada or a study permit, you don't have to include the times that you were in Canada. You only include the times that you were outside of Canada. So that you would include here. All they need is the from year and month until the to year and month. The country or territory by drop down just choose there and if you need to go to say for instance oh golly gosh where is that going if you just need to go to the US you just 
press U on your keyboard and it will take you to the U. Unfortunately, you can't type it out further than the first letter. It just takes you to the first letter that you typed in and then you can scroll down and you can choose whichever country it was. Also the location, they just want to have an idea of where in the country you were as well as your purpose of travel. Was it for business? Was it tourism? Um, was it in transit? Whatever it was, you can just include here under purpose of travel. If you need more lines, you can just click here to add more lines or if you need less, you can just minus here and it will take away the lines. Please make sure to add all the travel that you have done because obviously it's all listed in the system and they can easily check where you have been on your passport. So just include everything that is needed here. And then you can just read through this. And once you're done, you can just press validate. Now we haven't completed everything, so I'm going to do this so that you can see. The following fields must contain a value. So family name, we didn't fill in anything. So everywhere where they need information from you, they're going to put a little red block around it and say, wait a minute, you need to complete this, otherwise this form is not valid. And you will also notice that under here, Office Use, it will state, validate it, no. Once you've completed everything correctly and you, valid, you press validate and it's happy with what you've included, and there's no missing information, it will state yes here. And once it states yes, you know you are ready to submit your form. And if you like made a whole mess of things and you're like, oh no, gosh, I need to like start over, you can just clear the form right here, say okay, okay again, and the form would be in its original state. And then once you've completed everything, you've validated your form, you have a yes under validated here, you can save it under a new name. So go to file, save as, save it wherever you want to on your computer, and then you can submit it on your online profile. And this is then the completion of your Schedule 1 form for the IMM5257. Thank you.